This might be the best recovery tool in the world. It's an automatic foam roller. It's easy, you just turn it on. And then roll out any body part you want. Calves, hamstrings, glutes, quads, your feet, your back, and whatever else you want. You just relax and let it do the work to help you recover. I'm chilling, I'm good. I'm kicking back and I'm good. When you can't stay motivated, stay consistent. Mm, all right. Consistency gonna bring back your motivation. No matter what it is. You heard basketball players, rappers, sanitation people, whatever it is, you dig? The number one bicep exercise number that one? we use at Garage Strength to blow up your biceps to blow them is called up. Homer's. Homer Simpson? The Homer is an exercise where you hold dumbbells at a 90 degree angle right here while you walk. The whole goal what? of Homer's is to keep the dumbbells at a 90 degree angle when walking. Oh, so we're using an isometric hold that we know is inferior to isotonic contractions where you're moving through a full range of motion. And you're gonna walk back. And doing so while walking to accumulate unnecessary fatigue and reduce intent. For your biceps and but time and attention is not a driving mechanism for growth and rather just a byproduct, so it doesn't matter. Real power doesn't come to those who are born strongest, or fastest, or smartest. Bro, what the fuck? They weren't lying, your chest is really some shit. No need to lose any weight. You're kidding, right? You look great. Very fit. You can always be thinner. Look better. There's a mutual respect in the gym amongst those who go hard. Watch my man in the upper right hand corner with the green shirt as I finish banging out these hundreds. He casually begins to observe me finishing out the set. He positions himself to one, send some good vibes my way, but two, hop in in case I need some help. What you don't see is when I re rack the weights, my man came over and gave me some dap. No words exchanged, just respect. That's one of the things I love about the gym. A select few know exactly what I'm talking about. Whenever I'm losing motivation, I hear this voice. You're not dieting for fucking taste, motherfucker. You're dieting for the results that dieting is going to give you. Yeah. How it's going to make you fucking look. Oh, it tastes so nasty, I can't diet. You whining ass, bitch. Pacify sucking pussy. Shut the fuck up and eat that shit. I didn't realize my father was watching my set. I've never done over three reps of 600 pounds before. Watch till the end to see a proud father. My son, you must.
must succeed where I have failed. One day, you must rise up to avenge the Saiyans of planet Vegeta. Redeem the pride of our race. Today, I'm going to be telling you guys why your calves are small. Pretty much, it's because you train like a pussy. Okay, for real though, it's because I hear people always saying they throw calves in at the end of your workouts. When you're training calves, you have to treat it like any other body part. Whether you're training quads, chest, shoulders, you train those with, to your full ability as hard as you can, and then people just do calves half-ass at the end of a leg day. You gotta treat it like it's the hardest body part in the world to train. Do four sets, multiple exercise, till it absolutely kills. Drop sets, supersets, everything, just destroy the muscle. Otherwise, it's not gonna grow just like any other muscle wouldn't. Gotta make a statement for finals. Get the crowd riled Was up. Was I allowed to do that? Walk, walk, walk. Flex and smile. Transition. Shine. Judges are writing. I don't know how to flex my back. Am I moving way too quickly? Diff, but that was iconic. Gimme some love, BFF. Yes, you killed that. Big W. Here are three common mistakes you might be doing on your lap pull down and how to fix them. First mistake is moving into pronation, in other words, rotating the palm down on the way back up. When training the lower lat, we always want to remain adducted, tucked tight close to the rib cage where the lats are strongest and have the most mechanical advantage. If we rotate the palms down on the way back up, we move into a degree of abduction, thus moving us away from the rib cage and disadvantaging the lats. Rather, we want to maintain that neutral grip position for the entirety of the movement. The second mistake is extending the low spine or arching the low back as such. The lats use the rib cage as a fulcrum, in other words, for leverage to produce force. Thus we need to maintain a neutral spine in order to keep the lats advantaged and not have the upper back musculature into play. If we arch the low back, the orientation of the fulcrum changes and disadvantages the lats mechanically. Rather, brace in the core and maintain that neutral spine where we can now provide the lats the most internal leverage to move the load from that elevated shoulder position. And the last mistake is laterally flexing the spine at the bottom. We want to limit any sort of excessive bend as this will limit range of motion and thus limit our ability to shorten the lat, thereby limiting motion and recruitment. In this case, you're just feeling your external obliques contract as opposed to improving the lat stimulus. Be sure to like and follow for more.